very special. The peace of God. The peace of God. And when you look around our world today, you see that there's not really any peace. And all we see really is fear and anxiety. And one little thing happened and a sickness comes over that we can't, don't understand and everybody gets scared to death. The opposite of peace is all these things that are going, the emotions that take over, uh, that, that cause us to question God, to belittle God, and make us think that we, can, we can't do things, so that God can't change things, He can't, he can't just fix things. It's like, it's like there's this hopelessness. And, and I'm telling you, if you don't have God in your life, you have a very big reason to be afraid right now. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your person, you don't have a personal. I'm not talking about church or religion. I'm talking about you got a relationship with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If you don't have that, you need to be scared to death. But if you know Jesus, he gives us peace. How does that happen? How, how does that happen? And then what is the goal? Why is it so important that we have peace because if you don't have peace, you don't have the shelter that God has. If you don't know God, you don't have this, this, this hope that we're talking about. Instead, you have chaos, like what we're seeing going on in our world today. I want you to turn in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. Colossians 3, 15 is a simple goal, and I'll tell you a story. This is the scripture that God really settled some things in my life. Now, I had gone to church, and if you know my story, I had, I had prayed to receive Christ when I was a young man, got baptized, and I thought everything was cool. And I just ran from God. You've heard me say it before, you can't be a Christian and live like the devil. Well, I spent many years living like the devil, but I still thought I was a Christian. And the two don't go hand in hand. Y'all get that? Is that simple enough? <laughs> you can't be a Christian and live like the devil. Well, the old devil had slipped me a mickey, and I thought I was going to heaven because I got baptized when I was a nine-year-old boy. <laughs> and a long story, I was 29 stinking years old before I got my life right with Jesus. That's a lot of years of trouble. And it came down to a point where I, I got under conviction. I'd gone back to church, and I was doing all the stuff the church told me was the answers. <laughs> and I realized I was just as miserable in church as I was out there in all the bars doing everything that everybody said is fun. It's not fun. It leaves you as empty as all get out. But I was just as empty in the church as I was out there in the bars. You know why? Because I didn't have Jesus in my life. You can work, try to work your way to heaven. That's not your answer either. You've got to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. You've got to come to him and say, thank you, Jesus. You gave your life for me. I now give my life for you. And if you're going to follow him, you're going to follow him. doesn't mean you're not going to mess up, <laughs> but you're going to follow Jesus. And you'll be taking steps in that way. Well, this is a scripture that Wallace Edgar read to me that, boom, sometimes the word of God will re reset you. This scripture reset me on the spot and changed my life. Take a look at it. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15. Colossians 3, 15. It says, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. That's all I needed to hear. Because I didn't have peace about where I was going. I didn't know whether I was going to go to heaven or hell. To which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful. And so, so, let the peace of God rule in your heart. And that's where the battle was with me. Is I didn't have peace. I was doing all the right stuff on the outside, but it came to a point, all the stuff I was doing on the outside wasn't my answer. It didn't fix anything. And it came all down to one little thing on the inside of me. It was peace. I didn't have peace. It was at that moment that I realized that if I were to die, I'd go right straight to hell. No matter what anybody thought, no matter what I did, no matter I got baptized, no matter I was a member of Trinity Baptist Church, no matter if Wallace Edgar was my pastor, no matter if I went through this and was leading people to the Lord and I was doing preaching some and singing all this stuff for the Lord, didn't matter. No, all the stuff I was doing didn't matter. I didn't have Jesus in my life. And I didn't have peace that if I were to die, I would go to heaven. And 
this scripture is the goal for you. You got to quit looking at what's going on around you. And you got to let the peace of God rule in your heart. Peace of God. Three ways to have peace. How to allow the peace of God to rule in your heart. Three ways I want to share with you today uh, to have the peace of God in your life. You say, well, I don't have that. I, I, I just, I don't, I don't ever have that. I, I, I get good and then I'm bad. <laughs> And then I get worse, and then I, it gets better, and then it gets worse again. And, and you, your, your life's just kind of like a roller coaster, and, and you keep going through the motions, all these things. And, and year to year, there's a different deal that just wipes you out. And you go to church for a little bit, and you get better, and all of a sudden it just wipes you out again. And you realize you don't have peace. And if you're like me, you'll come to a point where you want to do something about it. But the first thing that you need to do in these days, if you want to have the peace of God in your life, is number one, you spend twice as much time reading God's Word as you do watching the news. Can I get a good amen from somebody out there? You want to fix some things in your life? Spend twice as much time in the Word of God as you do watching the news. And it will fix a whole bunch of stuff in your life. Amen? Or old me? Probably both. <laughs> so, Scripture says, turn to Psalms 91, verses 1 through 3. This has got to be a verse. When things go from bad to worse, you better have this marked in your Bible. You better have this on the wall of your house somewhere. And if you start looking twice as much at the Word of God as you are watching the news, you will discover things like Psalms chapter 91. I just want to read the first three verses of it. Psalms 91 verses 1 through 3. It says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, that's somebody that's come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and has a relationship. If you dwell under that shelter, that by itself fixes a whole bunch of things. It says, if you do, will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I'm in God's house, ain't nothing going to touch me that God don't want to touch me. And when I'm in his shadow and I'm so close to him, ain't nothing going to get through my God. Amen? I don't know if you believe that or not, but I do. Keep reading. Verse 2. Verse 2 says, says um, I will stay, I will say to the Lord, my refuge. Listen to these words that, that God is in your life if you, have, if you have a relationship with Christ. My refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That only comes when you have a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Look at verse 3. It says, for he who delivered you. Yes, so he will deliver you. And so no matter what you're going through, no matter what's taking place, it says he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And you think about the traps that Satan tries to put in, in your life and around your life. You know, a trapper is, is doing all kinds of sneaky stuff to try to catch whatever they're trying to snare, whether it's a coyote or whatever it may be. Uh, or whether it's in a beaver dam or whatever. They're trying to do all kinds of stuff, and that's what Satan's trying to do in your life. It, when you got God as your refuge and your shelter and you're in his shadow, he's going to deliver you from any kind of a snare that Satan could set in your life. And look at the last words of this verse. And from the deadly pestilence. So if you've got God in your life and you're dependent on God, coronavirus ain't never going to touch you. Okay? Amen. God is your refuge. Now, do we need to respect our government and respect what's going on in our country? Absolutely, yes. But we don't have to be afraid that the sky is falling because God is our refuge. You look at the words that are in the Scripture, and you see when you look at the Word of God and you see how true the Word of God is, it says He's our shelter, He we abide in his shadow. He's our refuge. He's our fortress. He's my God. You can trust him. He will deliver you from any kind of trap, from any kind of snare, and from any deadly pestilence. That is the peace of God. That's what God can give you if you come to him. Amen? That's what he can give you. That's what, that's what can happen in your life. You can have that kind of peace when you look at God. If you decide to turn off the news and look at the Word of God twice as much as you're watching the news. You can learn some stuff like this. How about it? Is that simple enough? And is that practical enough? 
turn the stuff off, go get your Bible. It'll make a huge impact. You'll begin to have peace. So spend twice as much time reading God's Word as you're listening, watching the news. The second thing is this. The second way you can have peace in your life is number two. Spend three times as much time praying and worship with Him as you do on social media and talk radio. <laughs> so well, I'm not watching the news because you ain't got time to watch the news, but you listen, you're doing social media when you're backside waiting on somebody to get that last set of yearlings up there to pin. <laughs> you know, when you're on your break at Cooper Tire and they're, well, coronavirus, you're putting it in there and you're doing all this stuff. And then you're driving around and you got talk radio going ding, 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 ding. Spend three times as much time praying to God and worshiping the Lord or listening to worship music as you do. Look at Psalms, I mean, excuse me, in, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. This is another Bible verse that needs to be a, it's a foundation verse in your life. A foundation, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Look at verse 6. It says, don't be anxious about anything, anything going on in your life, in your family, with sickness, whatever it may be. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, in every situation, no matter what it is, by prayer and petition. It says prayer three times as much. Okay. Prayer and petition with thanksgiving. What is that? Worship. <laughs> worship in the Lord. By prayer, petition, and worship or thanksgiving, present your request to God. So, hey, God, here's the things I'm anxious about, I'm worried about. And so you give that to God. So step one, you give it to God. Keep reading. If you do that, if you do that, the next verse in verse 7 says, and the peace, and that's what we're talking about, the peace of God. How do you get peace? If you do that, the peace of God, which transcribes all understanding, anything that doesn't make sense, and the sky's falling around you, and everything's going crazy. <laughs> but you got some kind of peace in your life that's crazy weird. It transcends all human understanding, your translation may say. Uh, and, and will guard your heart. And our hearts get burdened because of struggles and trials and, and strategies and schemes that Satan's trying to destroy you personally and your family. And if he can't get to you, he'll try to get to you through your spouse or through your kids or through your work or through uh, the water mains going out in Texarkana on Sunday morning or whatever it may be. You know, uh, all this stuff is if you do, he'll guard your hearts and your mind. And this is where the attack of peace hits us is you don't have peace because it, you, he's not guarding your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So, you want to have peace in your life? Get in the Word of God. How many times as much as you're watching the news? Twice. Spend how many times? Three times as much time praying and worshiping as you do listening and to talk radio. Y'all hear me? Talk radio and social media. And you, God will reset you. He'll give you peace. And here's the third and final thing I want to give you that is so powerful. Um, if you want to have peace in your life, number three is this. Stay ready to die. You say, I don't want to die. Well, I don't either want to die. I don't want to die. But every day I'm sitting on this earth, I can slap Satan upside the head 14 times that day. With the Word of God, I'm nobody compared to Satan. But I overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. If I'm alive, I'm testifying for the glory of God. No weapon formed against me will prosper, is what the Scripture says. If I'm alive, I'm making a difference for God. But if I'm dead, whoo, son, moonwalk in heaven, son, I'm telling you. How'd y'all like that? That's pretty good, wasn't it? Easy. You need to stay ready to die. I don't want to die. I'm worried, man. This coronavirus gets me. Go in a store, go in, a, get on an airplane, I'm going to get sick, going to die. 
going to take it home to my mama, my father, this old, my, both my parents are real weak immune systems. This could kill them dead. I'm going to run around here and be all worried and scared, worried for my own life, whatever it may be. You need to stay ready to die. And you'll have peace. You'll have peace with God. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Just so you know, I'm not just babbling up here. I'm not, this is not my opinion, what I just said to you, what I'm saying. This is God's, the, your creator, said, hey, pay attention. Don't worry about all that stuff. You need to be ready to die. And here's how he says it in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. He says, and just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes the judgment. Appointed. You see that word? Appointed. <laughs> Appointed. Appointed does not mean accident. Appointed means that every single one of you, including me, has a death date that God already knows. Do y'all believe God's word to be true? He says it's appointed. He knows it. Before the foundations of the earth, somehow or another, he knows when you're going to die. And he's not changing that date every time the coronavirus comes around or whatever it may be. I may die of the coronavirus, and all I can say is glory be to God, honey. You my rich lady, and everything's be another pastor come in here, and I'm gone up to be in heaven, and I got a ranch waiting up there like ain't nobody ever seen before in their life. And everything will be cool <laughs> if I die of the coronavirus. <laughs> I'll be happy. You'll be happier because then you'll get a real preacher. <laughs> Amen. He can really preach. My point is, guys, you're not going to die of the coronavirus unless God wants you to die of the coronavirus. <laughs> Amen. You're not going to die of a car wreck going home unless God wants you to die of a car wreck going home. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you ain't ready to die, you need to be scared to death of the coronavirus. If you're not ready to die, I would not dare walk out and get in a vehicle and get on the highway because somebody would probably kill you dead. Something like would go wrong with your vehicle, you run off the road. You run off the road and die. I would never. You don't you need to be scared to death to get around any kind of heavy equipment. If your job is working around heavy equipment that could squash you, tractors, bush hogs, I would not get on another horse. They bu buck you off and break you half in two. I would change my job and go get in a padded cell somewhere in an office. If you're not ready to die, you need to be scared to death. Because if you die and you're not ready to die, and you come to that judgment, he says it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. And if you're not ready to die, you know, only people going to make it to heaven are people that follow Jesus. Not said Jesus, follow Jesus with their feet, with their mouth, with their eyes, with their life. That's what the Bible calls a disciple, follower of Jesus. Not somebody that prayed a prayer when they're nine years old like I did. Uh-uh. There's got to be some action with your life. Verse 28, look at it. Keep reading in Hebrews chapter 9. Verse 28 says, And so Christ Having been offered once, bearing the sins for many, he's already paid the price for all of us, will appear a second time. And to deal with sin, or says not to deal with sin, he's already done that on the cross, amen. It's, it's complete. He had already paid for sin, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. you got to be ready to die, eagerly waiting for him. And then you'll have peace. So that's why I say you got to be ready to die, eagerly waiting for him. 
not worrying like the coronavirus is going to get you or something like that. It says, give your life to Jesus, what he says. If Jesus gave his life for you, you'd give your life to him. If you're worried about your family member dying, you need to go tell them about Jesus. That's the best thing you can do for them. Don't do something stupid if you're sick or whatever. Whatever. Don't, don't get around them. Don't put them out there where they can be exposed to it. But what's more important than you worried about them getting the coronavirus is you worrying about whether they're going to heaven or hell. Your mama and your daddy and your kids and your wife and your friends. That's a whole lot more important for you to figure out whether they're going to heaven or hell than whether they're going to be sick or whatever. Y'all listening to me today? I'm, I'm, I'm preaching. I feel like I'm, I'm saying something you need to hear. Y'all getting this? It's more important you to worry about their soul than their health. Because their soul is what's going to last for all eternity. So, that's why I'm saying <laughs> you want peace in your life. You need to be ready to die. You really do. You need to be ready to die. And when you get ready to die, I want you to turn to John chapter 14, verse 27. John 14, 27. This is what God or Jesus says he gives you if you're ready to die. If he gives you this. He says, peace, I leave with you. And my peace, I give you. He said, I do not give to you what the world gives. The world gives this thing. You're not. The world just disintegrates that heaven and hell are true. If, if, if you believe, if the world, if America believed heaven and hell were true, I promise you we wouldn't be living the way we're living. If, you see, the reason they don't, because they don't believe. They, don't, they, they say it, but they don't live it. They live one way, but don't live and don't follow Christ. He says, peace I give you. And it says, my peace I give you. He says, I do not give you what the world gives you. Keep reading. He says, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You don't have to be afraid when you're ready to die. You don't have to. Because it's appointed unto man. Put our name in the blank. It's appointed unto you and me once to die. So God knows your death date. It's not changing, moving around by the things of the world, what the world wants you to believe. Are you going to get sick? Sure might. <laughs> but you ain't going to die until God wants you to die. <laughs> Bottom line. And so say, he says, don't let your heart be troubled. Grab a hold of peace. Run with it. Don't let your hearts be troubled. It's part of the armor of God. God says, and shot your feet. With the preparation of the gospel of peace. It only comes from knowing God. Anybody ever walked outside uh, in, in the rocks and the cold and you run outside in your short britches because you're going to shoot a coyote or something at night out there with you fighting your dogs or something like that and you can't hardly walk around. If you walk around my house too far, you'd be stick, stepping and there'd be stuff running through your toes, you know, if you don't have shoes on. But you understand, we can't function without shoes or boots or whatever it may be. And it's the same way. You can't function. You can't go through this world unless you're going to put on some peace here. And I'm telling you how to do it. Two times as much time in the Word as you watching that, that gum television set. <laughs> Three times as much time in prayer and in worship as you're on social media and the things of the world and talk radio. And the third thing you need to do is you need to be ready to die. Today, you need to be ready to die. If you're not ready to die, you ain't got no business walking out them doors. You need to be scared slapping to death because this coronavirus is going to kill you, kill your family. If that don't happen, something else is going to kill you. and You're going to die and go to hell, and you're going to wish. You're going to remember every word I said here from this pulpit today, saying, I remember a preacher telling me I need to be ready to die. I wish I was ready to die, but I wasn't ready, and I walked out of that room and God, sure enough, I died. Sure enough, I went to judgment. And sure enough, I didn't follow Jesus. Sure enough, I had all these other things. I was like that rich young ruler that had all that stuff, and that rich guy had all that stuff that he was talking about. And I was too busy. I said, I'll do it later.
today might be your last later. I said today might be your last later. I ask you to pray with me. Father God, our world doesn't have any peace. It's very obvious they don't have peace because they don't know you. There's a whole bunch of people showed up here today because they want to do everything they can to be right with you. And I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you're going to help. Lord, you're going to help them take the right steps. I think possibly if you're a Christian here today, you may need to repent before a holy God if you've gotten wrapped up in the things of this world and worry and anxiety and and it's chipped away at who you are as a Christian and you began to be fearful and anxiety has taken over. Just say, God, I'm committed to get back in your word, to reset my mind, reset my heart. My heart's troubled. In the name of Jesus, I want to exchange all that stuff that's all the, my mind going nuts, going every direction with peace. And just say, God, I'm sorry. And I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to push those things of the world aside, and I'm going to put you first in your word and prayer and worship. the day when I figured out I wasn't ready to die. I remember how that made me feel. I remember the worry and the anxiety that built up in me and it really bothered me. And I really knew I needed to do something. And I was serious about getting right with God that day maybe today you're serious about getting right with God today you're serious about it and you want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're ready to die that if you were to die that you go on to heaven and right now there's not peace in your life on that if you were to die right now, you really don't know whether you'd go to heaven or hell. The Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. If you want to settle that once and for all, I'm going to ask you, nobody looking around, except you and me and God, I'm going to pray a very specific prayer for you. I'm not going to ask you to come front. We don't do that business. I'll pray with you right there where you sit. If you want to settle this and be ready to die, stick your hand up in the air just as high as you possibly can. Amen. Hold it up there. Amen. Lord Jesus, you see the hands, the people that are saying they want to be ready to die. Lord, the only way we'll ever be ready to die is if we give our lives truly to you relationship with you. Lord, there is no danger when we come to you. We get in your shelter and your shadow and all those benefits. But the world pulls us away from you so much. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you hear these people's prayer. That they're ready to die. That when they walk out of this place, they will be ready to die. Because you filled them with the power of the Holy Spirit. You've forgiven them of their sins. And they made a commitment to follow you. If you pray with me right now, just say, Jesus, today I commit to you to follow you. Tell him that. I'm going to follow you. Jesus, you gave your life for me. And I've been holding back. Today, I give my life to you. I pray in Jesus' name that you forgive me of my sin 
everything I've done wrong. In the name of Jesus, forgive me. I want to have a real relationship with you. 